yes manavi good morning ma'am good morning ma'am law of conservation of energy states that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed it can only be converted from uh, one form to another uh, total energy of the universe remains constant yes very good so total energy of the universe remains constant energy can neither be created nor be destroyed it can only be converted from one form into the other so this is law of conservation of energy and who will tell me which two examples you can have uh, as examples of conservation of energy what examples can you give yes uh, dipali raise hand anshia okay simple pendulum and freely falling object yes we did two examples in detail a simple pendulum and oscillating simple pendulum and a freely falling object we had done two examples okay now what happens for a freely falling object where is the energy maximum and what form of energy it is having at the top and at the bottom who will tell me what kind of energy does a freely falling body have on the top and at the bottom yes yes think about it what kind of energy will it have uh yes uh, jia but i have not muted you you can speak ma'am at top the energy is put gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy is zero at the ground level the kinetic energy is maximum but the potential energy is zero and at the middle yes. both energies are half yes at the center point half energy is kinetic and half is potential now who will tell me about a simple pendulum what kind of energy does a simple pendulum have at the mean and extreme position what energy it is having at the mean position and what form of energy at the extreme position who will tell me now <clears throat> okay navneet you tell me yes ma'am Ma'am, at the mean position, the potential, uh, the kinetic energy is maximum, as it, uh, and the potential energy is zero because there is no height. At extreme positions, there are there is height. We can say the height as h, and uh, there is no kinetic energy as there is no motion in the object. So the kinetic energy is zero. At extreme positions, there is tension energy, and at mean position, there is kinetic energy. Yes, exactly. so yes at the mean position of a simple pendulum kinetic energy is maximum potential energy is zero and at the extreme position kinetic energy is zero and potential energy is maximum so that total energy remains constant yes that's great so that means you people have studied so next topic last topic is power let us start with that now i told you energy is the ability to do work but power is the rate of doing work rate at which work is done that is called power okay so time is also important rate means when anything varies with the time when we consider time also in case of energy we don't see time in whatever time the object has performed the work we don't bother about time but in case of power time is very important we see what in what time the object has completed the work okay in what time the work has been done this is seen in case of power so what is power rate of doing work rate means we are considering time so write the definition of power it is rate of doing work rate of doing work rate of doing work that is called power 
so what is the formula of power it is work divided by time rate means divided by time so the formula of power is work upon time or we can write p is equal to w by t this is the formula for work p is equal to w by t all right t is equal to w by t so this is the formula of power now there are different ways of writing work so there are different ways of writing power also when we write work in the form of fs power will be fs over t okay writing time under displacement and using displacement over time equal to velocity we get one more formula of power what we have used here velocity is displacement over time velocity is displacement upon time so note down one more expression for power mechanical power that is force into velocity that is force into velocity when we use the formula of work mgh you know potential energy we calculated in the form of work so when we use work mgh then the formula of power becomes mgh upon time this is another formula for power mgh upon time so first formula is work upon time force into velocity mgh upon time so any formula we can use accordingly and also this is mechanical power if we talk about electrical power then power is rate of rate at which electrical energy is supplied or consumed okay so work and energy you know are also equivalent their units are also the same so we can also write power as energy upon time we can also write power as energy upon time accordingly depending upon the situation we can use any of above expression theek hai inme se koi bhi formula hum use kar sakte hain as per the need is that clear now students okay now let's come to the si unit of power after sir james watt the si unit of power was named that is called watt okay after sir james watt the unit of power was named it is denoted by w capital w only so watt is the si unit of power so let us write it power is 1 watt when work is 1 joule and time is 1 second okay so 1 watt is 1 joule per second basically 1 watt is 1 joule per second basically so just connecting these things we can define 1 watt also so write the definition of 1 watt first listen to me 1 watt is the power of any device that performs 1 joule of work in 1 second कोई भी डिवाइस जो वन सेकेंड में वन जाउल का वर्क परफॉर्म करता है उसकी पावर को हम वन वॉट बोलते हैं ठीक है सो राइट डाउन नाउ द डेफिनेशन ऑफ वन वॉट वन वॉट इज द पावर ऑफ अ डिवाइस वन वॉट इज द पावर ऑफ अ डिवाइस दैट परफॉर्म वन वॉट इज द पावर ऑफ अ डिवाइस दैट परफॉर्म One joule of work in one second. That performs one joule of work in one second. That performs one joule of work in one second. Other units. Other units of power are kilowatt. Kilo means thousand. So thousand watt, mega. Mega means million. Ten raised to power six watt. Giga. Giga means billion. Ten raised to power nine. And one horsepower. 
is 746 watt. One horsepower motors are usually, uh, usually expressed in this unit. Power of motors that is expressed in horsepower. It is equal to 746 watt. So all these are bigger units than watt. Kilowatt means 1000 watt. Megawatt means 10 raised to power 6 watt. Gigawatt means 10 raised to power 9 watt. Horsepower means 746 watt. <clears throat> are the units of power clear to you? And power is also a scalar quantity. Like work is a scalar quantity. Power is also a scalar quantity. Because it has nothing to do with the direction. It depends upon time and work. Both are scalar quantities. So that's why power is also a scalar quantity. All right. Write a question now based on power. Where you will uh, understand how time is important. Write down. Two persons A and B. Two persons A and B. Complete certain piece of work. Two persons A and B complete certain piece of work in one day and two days respectively. Two persons A and B complete certain piece of work in one day and two days respectively. In one day and two days respectively. Which of them, which of them, first part, has done more work? Which of them has done more work? And second part, has more power? Has more power? Yes, anybody who would like to answer part A, which of them has done more work? Which of them has done more work? What do you think? Yes, students, any idea? Anshad, Ashdi, did you raise hand? Okay, Namneet, you see. Some the work done by both of them is equal as they are doing work on the same piece. Of yes, excellent. Work done by both is same because both have completed the work. Yes, very good. And what about the second part, Anshia? More power, who is having? Ma'am, uh, the person A who completed the work in one day has more power. Yes. Because power is inversely proportional to time. Yes. So one who has taken less time has more power. Because in case of power, we consider time. But for work or energy, we don't consider time. So from this question, it will be clear to you the dependence of time. Okay. Any doubt regarding this question? Why both have uh, done same amount of work and why A has more power? Any doubt regarding this, you can ask. No doubts? Okay, great. So then, let's talk about energy or electrical energy. You know, the practical unit of energy or practical unit of electrical energy is Joule. Practical unit of energy is Joule. You know, okay, yes, I'll sabko pata hai ki all the forms of energy have the same unit Joule. But commercial unit of electrical energy or energy, commercial unit of energy is kilowatt hour. So remember this unit, kilowatt is a unit of power, but when we write kilowatt hour, that becomes the unit of energy. So kilowatt hour is the commercial unit of energy. Kilowatt hour, that is the commercial unit of energy. All right. Then we are now going to derive a relation between kilowatt hour and joule. So write down the question in this form. 
डिराइव अ रिलेशन बिटवीन किलो वॉट आर एंड जाओ डिराइव अ रिलेशन बिटवीन किलो वॉट आर एंड जाओ डिराइव रिलेशन बिटवीन किलो वॉट आर एंड जाओ सो लेट एस डू दैट वन किलो वॉट आर कैन बी रिटर्न एज वन किलो वॉट इन टू वन आर नो हार्म इन राइटिंग लाइक दिस वन किलो वॉट इन टू वन आवर वी कैन राइट नाउ किलो वॉट मीन्स थाउजेंड वॉट एंड वन आवर इज सिक्सटी मिनट एंड वन मिनट इज सिक्सटी सेकेंड मीन्स वन आवर इज थर्टी सिक्स हंड्रेड सेकेंड फर्दर वन वॉट वी हैव सीन वी हैव डिफाइंड इज जाउल पर सेकेंड वन वॉट इज जाउल पर सेकेंड second gets cancelled and we are left with 36 and 5 zeros so 1 kilowatt hour is 36 lakh joule or if you express in scientific notation we can write 1 kilowatt hour is 3.6 into 10 raised to power 6 joule so 1 kilowatt hour is 3.6 into 10 raised to power 6 joule this may be asked in the form of mcq this may be asked uh, in the form of derivation the small two three step derivation also yes dharya bolo oh yes yes ma'am uh, ma'am ma'am wo apne kaun sa step likha hai jisme humne 1000 ko multiply kiya hum second last step 1000 joule per second into 3600 joule a uh, second second gets cancelled and then i have multiplied 3600 with 1000 that becomes 36 lakh and joule okay. only okay ma'am thank you ma'am is it clear okay <clears throat> so this is the small proof of 1 kilowatt hour having 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 joules okay fine now our chapter is over work energy and power that is over and we are going to do the exercise so i told you to keep the book near you as this was the last topic of the chapter i'm going to share exercise with you work part we had done already Uh, are you able to see the exercise are you able to see okay so uh, work part we had already done question number 1 uh, etc we had already done now we are to do other questions question number 4 also we had done that is based on work energy theorem all right so uh fifth question let us discuss uh second question also i think we have not done yes let us do second question an object thrown at a certain angle to the ground moves in a curved path and falls back to the ground initial and final points of path of the object lie on the same horizontal line what is the work done by the force of gravity on the object yes the work done by force of gravity on the object will be zero in this case because uh, this kind of object is called a projectile okay for example when we kick a football exactly it follows a curved path as it is mentioned in the question so same situation is there when we kick a football then it goes at certain angle 
and follows a curved path and comes back to the ground at the same level so from here suppose we kick a football it goes like this and comes at the same horizontal level because it comes back to the ground of course so a and b points are on the same level they are asking what is the work done by gravity in such a case so work done by gravity in this case is zero because uh, if we see the motion of object or work done in going up from point a that you can say is minus mgh and work done at point b in coming down will be plus mgh so the total work done is minus mgh plus mgh equal to zero so in this case work done by gravity is zero because whatever work is done for the upward part is same as the downward part but equal and opposite so write the answer to this question work done will be zero and this is a project type third question a battery lights a bulb describe the energy changes involved in the process yes battery matlab cell ho gaya kaun batayega battery or cell lights a bulb what kind of energy transformation is taking place here very simple we have done so many examples fan bulb etc in this case what energy is being converted into other form yes लाइट Fourth question we have already done. Now let's do question number five. If a mass of ten kg is at a point A on the table, for example here A point, it is moved to a point B. अब ये horizontally move कर रहे हैं. If line joining A and B is horizontal, what is the work done on the object? बस ये situation है. यहाँ पे ऐसे ही फोर्स ए से बी तक लेके जा रहा है ऑब्जेक्ट को ठीक है इफ लाइन जॉइनिंग ए एंड बी इज हॉरिजॉन्टल व्हाट इज द वर्क डन ऑन द ऑब्जेक्ट बाय द ग्रेविटेशनल फोर्स एंड एक्सप्लेन योर आंसर यस एनी आइडिया अबाउट इट इन दिस केस व्हाट इज द वर्क डन ऑन द ऑब्जेक्ट बाय द ग्रेविटेशनल फोर्स yes students any idea about it how much work is being done here yes no one in this case also the work done is zero because you see the weight of the object is the work done by gravitational force they are asking so gravitational force is a weight acting in the downward direction and displacement is taking place in the forward direction so angle between force and displacement is 90 degree so work done by gravitational force is 90 degree uh, work done by gravitational force is zero in this case because theta is 90 degree they are not asking the work done by horizontal force that is displacing the object they are asking work done by gravitational force in this case is that clear any doubt regarding this okay let us see the next question now six the potential energy of a freely falling object decreases progressively does this violate the law of conservation of energy and why yes who will tell when a falling a freely falling object is falling we have seen that potential energy goes on decreasing gradually does this violate the law of conservation of energy what will you say regarding this yes anyone else 
ओके राघव आप बताओ यस राघव मैम दिस डज नॉट वायलेट द लॉ ऑफ कंजर्वेशन ऑफ एनर्जी एज दैट पोटेंशियल एनर्जी इज बीइंग कन्वर्टेड इनटू काइनेटिक एनर्जी बिकॉज that potential energy is being converted into kinetic energy as the yes. object falls down yes it gets converted into some other form of energy and we have seen that mathematically through a complete derivation okay so that does not violate the law of conservation of energy we have seen that at every point during the journey of freely falling body total energy remains constant conserved yes let's see the next question now seven what are various energy transformations that occur when you are riding a bicycle yes who will tell now when we are riding a bicycle then what kind of energy transformations are going on yes who will tell this uh yes janvi आप बताओ वट आर वेरियस एनर्जी ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन दैट अकर वेन वी आर राइडिंग अ बाइसाइकल मैम मस्कुलर एनर्जी चेंजेस टू कैनेटिक एनर्जी एंड प्रोड्यूस हीट एनर्जी मस्कुलर एनर्जी इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू कैनेटिक एनर्जी एंड प्रोड्यूस हीट एनर्जी कैनेटिक एंड बिकॉज ऑफ मूवमेंट ऑन द ग्राउंड यस सम एनर्जी इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू हीट ऑल्सो यस यू कैन से so muscular energy is converted into mechanical energy as the cycle is moving mechanical energy plus some heat energy eight does the transfer of energy take place when you push a huge rock with all your might and fail to move it where is the energy you spend going yes gurshan would you like to answer yes ma'am Energy transfer does not take place as no displacement takes place in the direction of applied force. The energy spent is used to overcome the inertia of fresh of the rock. Anyone else? What is your opinion? Is he right in saying this? Uh, yes, Raghav. Ma'am, as the rock does not move, we can say that the muscular energy of our body gets converted into heat energy as our body heats up while we try pushing the rock. So, what do you think? Transfer of energy is taking place or not? Ma'am, yes. Yes. Transfer of energy is still taking place. Transfer of energy is taking place. We are spending our lot of muscular energy, and that is produced. That is converted into heat energy. we get we get perspired all over okay sweating takes place so heat energy is there and uh, we uh, are tired also and some energy is lost to the surroundings also so more than one form of energy is there into which our muscular energy gets converted you can mention as you feel question number 9 a certain household has consumed 250 units of energy during a month how much energy is this in joules so you know one unit is 1 kilowatt hour the unit that i told you commercial unit of energy kilowatt hour that is called one unit that we use for billing of electricity bill of our house right is that clear so 1 kilowatt hour means one unit and you know its value in joule 3.6 into 10 is plus 6 joule we just derived so convert 250 units into joule now what you will do you will multiply 250 with 3.6 into 10 raised to power 6 joule and you will get the answer let's do it here so you will write one unit is equal to 3.6 into 10 raised to power 6 joule so 250 units will be 250 into 3.6 into 10 raised to power 6 joule so tell me how much is this 
solve this and tell the answer if one unit we know its value in joule then what will be the value of 250 unit yes gorav m9 into 10 raised to the power 8 yes joules that is 9 into 10 raised to the power 8 joules 9 into 10 raised to the power 8 joules so we will complete rest of the exercise tomorrow okay keep your books with you and copies with you